Have you ever wondered how to tackle the challenge of managing network traffic? It's a question that has kept many network administrators up at night. Network traffic management is a complex task, with a multitude of factors to consider, from bandwidth allocation to prioritizing certain types of data. But what if there was a way to simplify this daunting task? SD1 rules might be the answer for this very purpose. Expanding on SD1 topic, FortiGate SD1 rules offer a comprehensive solution to many of the problems you may have faced with the network traffic management. They are designed to offer a seamless, efficient method of managing network traffic, ensuring optimal performance at all times, especially when you combine them with the performance SLA, which is another feature at your disposal in SD1. SLA stands for Service Level Agreement and FortiGate allows you to configure and monitor performance SLAs by setting criteria like latency, jitter and packet loss for specific application or traffic flows. Essentially, it is a set of predefined metrics related to network performance and reliability. In this video, we are going to swiftly take a look on both of those features by configuring them in our lab. We are going to pick right where we left off in previous video talking about load balancing. I am going to open CLI and show you how to pick from various methods. Default load balancing method is source IP based, which is fine, but if we want more flexibility and reflect what is happening in testing, the source dest IP based is better option. Be aware that this setting will take a place only when traffic hit implicit SD1 rule, but in SD1 you can control much more than load balancing mechanisms, so let's explore a little bit more what is possible. Starting as usual with our virtual machine Kali Linux, I am already logged into the FortiGate, so navigate to SD1 and click on the SD1 rules. With SD1 rules you can do cool stuff like deflecting traffic to the specific port based on the service used. So let's take a look on that. I am going to create a rule here and name is going to be PayPal. It's going to be valid for all addresses. And I am going to pick Internet Service. Now list down to PayPal, right when, when I'm going to find it. Okay, PayPal web is uh, perfect. Okay, the port which is going to be used is port 1. So every time when somebody will access PayPal web, it is going to deflect traffic via port 1. Since we have configured only one SD1 zone, we are going to of course choose CMD and this is looking good actually. Let's open under rule creation and the name is going to be LinkedIn. Again, valid for all addresses and the idea be behind this is every time when user is going to access LinkedIn web, let me find it first, here it is, LinkedIn web. So every time when user is going to access LinkedIn web, FortiGain is going to root him out via port 2 this time. And of course, our zone preference is going to be CMD. So let's click OK and we are ready basically to do some test. Here I'm going to refresh it so these rules are obvious. Okay, and now we can quickly jump to the machine from where I am going to test. It is going to be this machine. And I'm going to do an lookup for LinkedIn and PayPal web. Okay, 
okay this is perfect and and let's look up for paypal okay and now i'm going to use sniffer packet which is very good tool on FortiGate and via this tool we are going to test what we have configured and if it is working. So we are going to prepare two console windows. In first console I am going to put one of the IP addresses which we have searched via NSLOOKUP. So one moment. So for PayPal it is going to be 151 101.1.21 and port 443 4 unlimited packets and local timestamps perfect and now let me open under console window and it is going to be similar command diagnose sniffer packet on port any host is going to be 13.107.42.14 okay 13 .107 and port 443 ok 40 L let's press enter here and now we are ready to run a test and let's try to access paypal in second window let's try to access linkedin.com and looks like page is loaded let's take a look on the result in our console windows so we can stop this and i can already see that linkedin is accessed via port 2 And we can check under console window and looks like our configuration is working perfectly because PayPal is being accessed via port 1. So, pretty cool. The next thing which we are going to take a look on is Performance SLA. Performance SLA is monitoring health of the links for all SD1 members. Although it can be selected to monitor specific SD1 members. It is like a sonar which is probing remote location and measure response time, jitter or packet loss, which can be attached to SD1 rule and steer traffic based on the measured outputs, meaning that traffic will be routed over an interface which does meet requirements. So let's take a look on our monitoring mechanism and configure one for us. I'm going to give it a creative name, which is Sonar. And we will be pinging Google DNS server. Now, SLA target, these values represent threshold and when it is going to be crossed, it will turn red. With combination of SD1 rules, this can be used as condition of what is acceptable. And because we are in lab environment, I'm going to set up a little bit higher values. Actually, this should be just about OK. And packet loss percent. OK, let's, let's pick up 3%. Check interval is going to be every 10 seconds, so it is going to be 10,000 milliseconds and this is just about fine 
and after a few seconds or after refresh we should be able to see first results. Ok, let's take a look on under pre-configured options here. For example, FortiGuard would be very useful, so let's open that. And as you can see, it is sending props with using HTTP protocol. And I am going to select all SD1 members. SLA target in here is 5%, which is higher than we configured in or, uh, or sonar so if this is going to be uh, too low of course try to increase it because we are in lab environment and this can cause a flapping interface and of course I'm going to increase uh, check interval so uh, our gateways are not bothered that often and click OK and in the seconds uh, you will see that this check wheel comes up Ok, let's refresh this window so we can see what is the result on FortiGuard. As you can see, the three shots which are being crossed are currently marked as red, but could be considered non-concerning because this is just early measurements. There is one more thing which I wanted to show you. Take a peek on the log and report, system events, and when we click on the logs, and open SD1 events. Here you will be informed about every SD1 event. Included link is not meeting three shot, which is going to be logged here. Okay guys, I have saved the coolest demonstration for last and in this demonstration we are going to create SD1 rule and combine it with the SLA target. But first let's start with the name and the name will be QoS dash tell because this time we are going to state traffic based on internet service and SLA target and during the search this happened so So I have to search the service which I am going to use manually and it is going to be Telegram. Here it is. This time interface selection strategy is going to be based on lowest cost SLA. And interface preference as selected is going to be port 1 and port 2. And we are going to attach our, our sonar, which we previously created. But before we click OK, let's take a look on ports, which is currently there. The cost is a tiebreaker if all interfaces have pass SLA target. Lower cost is preferred. If cost is equal, configure interface preference is a final tiebreaker. Let's jump here so we can currently see what is our order and let's return back to port 1 configuration and we are going to adjust port 1 with the cost preference of 5. Another thing to talk about is priority. Priority is tied to ECMP and it has no big influence here because it is going to be used when the traffic will hit implicit SD1 rule, meaning traffic did not match any rule. Ok, and let's adjust port 2 as well. I am going to assign cost of 10 and in the background I have assigned priority of 2. This is because I want to preserve data consumption on my mobile phone when traffic flow is hitting implicit SD1 rule. Now let's take a look on the Excel spreadsheet which I prepared for you to make it more understandable. If port 1 will have satisfying SLA target, it is going to be selected as preferred interface because of cost. If port 1 will not satisfy SLA target, 
The next port which do satisfy SLA target with lowest cost will be selected, in this case port 2. And let's imagine we have another two interfaces configured in our SD1 zone. If their cost is matching, the next tiebreaker is going to be interface preference. Port 3 would be selected as last and port 4 would be selected as third. Ok, let's minimize that. And let's save all configuration. I'm going to also move this rule to the top and refresh it. So we can see the selected interface right away, the preferred member. And let's quickly jump to lab. I'm going to explain what is going to happen in demonstration. On Windows 7 I have a Telegram application running. And in this cloud I have prepared attacker, which is going to launch attack on this interface. So let's jump to Windows. As you can see, the telegram is running here, but what I want to see is IP address and port, which is telegram using, and we can learn that with the command netstat-abn, which is going to print executables, port and IP addresses in numerical form. Let's scroll up for a telegram IP address. Ok, here it is. I'm going to copy this and save it into notepad because I will use it later. Ok, for now we can minimize this window and now I'm going to switch back to FortiGate and I'm going to sniff traffic with the command diagnose sniffer packet on port any host is going to be IP address of telegram which we saved 104.17.108.108 and port 443 with the parameters for OL hit enter and I'm going to now generate some traffic from telegram And as you can see, captured traffic has already appeared. As expected, we are currently using port 1 as a preferred interface. And that's perfectly fine. And now let me show you the cool stuff. Here is the attacker. And I am going to launch DOS attack on the interface which I mentioned previously. Just keep in mind, if you are going to try to replicate this, don't use this program for bad intentions and keep your attack within your lab environment or you might end up in trouble. Ok, and DOS is running. And now we are going to watch our sniffer on FortiGate. Let's also quickly check what is happening with the third one. As you can see, the uh, connection on board 1 looks completely broken. <laughs> but I didn't want to completely broke the link, so I'm going to modify attack a little bit, so we can see behavior when SLA target is not meet. After modification, our results look like this. There is a huge packet loss, which is also convenient for us, simply because port 1 is not going to meet SLA target on our SD1 row. To verify in GUI that FortiGate has switched to port 2, we simply click on SD1 rows. As you can see, it is reflecting on black checkbox. But let's not stop here, I'm going to also confirm it in CLI with a sniffer packet. On Windows machine I am going to generate some traffic on Telegram while running exactly same sniffing command on FortiGate and as you have noticed results are already popping up. 
confirming that indeed traffic from Telegram is being redirected via port 2. With that, I would like to finish this video and I must say there is more to SD1 than I showed you. But at least now you might have a good idea how does it look like on FortiGate. And if you are building your lab with me, you can try stuff on your own. I'm looking forward to see you in next video. Goodbye.